Hello everyone, my name is Yu Jiefeng and I'm studying in Peking University. Today it's my honor here to give a presentation about our work. Completing missing prevalence rates for multiple chronic diseases by jointly leveraging both intra- and inter-disease population health state correlations. And I will introduce our work in the following four parts. Background, challenges, method, and experiment. First, I will introduce the background of our work. Due to unhealthy lifestyles and a fast growing aging population, many chronic and malignant diseases are becoming increasingly prevalent in our society. For example, heart disease and cancer. Understanding the changes in population health patterns and genes is crucial for the monitoring, research planning, and evolution of health programs and policies. To achieve these goals, population health monitoring, which is a typical institutionalized sensing of information about the health, health status of a population, has become a core function for a nation's public health system. There are commonly two ways for healthcare authorities to perform prevalence profiling, namely clinical record integration and residence survey. For authorities that adopt clinical record integration, they need to integrate data sources from information systems belonging to multiple medical institutions to get an overview of mortality rates. However, such data integration task is non-trivial due to the many reasons. First, data access while pre preserving patient privacy comes at a non-trivial cost and overhead. Second, the data structure and database design might be different from multiple clinics or hospitals, thus increasing the difficulty and cost of data linkage. For health authorities that adopt residents serving. They need to recruit a representative group of residents and collect it via interviews or self-managed questionnaires. In order to minimize the bias, the number of symbols should be large enough with appropriate demographic distributions. Therefore, this process is time-consuming and incurs high cost, including labor cost for serving administrators and incentive-based payments for survey participants. While population health data are becoming more and more publicly available on the internet than ever before, it is a common place to find many missing entries on this data sites due to the aforementioned difficulties in health data integration and prevalence profiling. The data incompleteness significantly lower the quality and power of the released data which handle timely data analysis and reliable knowledge generation by public health authorities or researchers. So, to bridge this gap, we propose a new approach named, named Compressive Population Health, CPH, for completing the missing entries of prevalence rates for multiple chronic diseases, thus in construction of four reliable and timely population health monitoring picture for the current year. The key insight of CPH is that the missing entries of, of prevalence rates of the current year could be recovered by leveraging both intra-disease spatial correlations as well as inter-disease correlations, as shown in the picture. For intra-disease spatial correlations, a number of studies have highlighted the role of neighborhood effects on health. That is, nearby regions are more similar in the prevalence of certain diseases than the distant ones. For inter-disease correlations, commonly defined as the core presence of two or more diseases, demonstrates that statistics for different types of diseases may also correlate with each other. Although the above two types of data correlations have been demonstrated, there are still technical challenges to realize the vision of CPH. First is 
How to extract and model both intra and inter disease state correlations based on incomplete training data? And how to jointly represent and fuse these correlations to build an accurate prevalence inference model? By jointly considering the overall challenges, we propose the CPH. Our approach is based on the missing data imputation method of YUM, which they called Generative Advisory Imputation Nights, GAIN. But traditional imputation using GAIN fails to exploit its inter-disease data correlations, so we propose CPH to jointly fuse both intra-disease and inter-disease data correlations to fill in the missing values in the data site. CPH contains three components. Convolutional neural network based representation. Unlike traditional generative or the astral network, it contains generator and discriminator. The purpose of introducing CNN is to extract intra disease and inter disease state correlations. First, the missing entries of each chronic disease matrix are initialized with different noise variables Z, obtained by simply from either a normal or uniform distribution. Then, we can regard the three chronic disease matrix as an image with three channels, where the two dimensions of the image represent time and space, and the number of the channels indicates the different types of diseases. Finally, we can put this image into CNN-based representation, as so in the picture, to get a future max x prime. The detailed structure of the CNN network is shown in the picture. It contains two layers of convolution and pooling operations. The generator, J, takes future matrix and mask matrix as input and outputs a complete matrix. XCAD corresponds to the completed data matrix. That is, the ob observations are obtained from the original target disease matrix X, and the missing values are replaced by the corresponding values in the X bar matrix. And the hint generator is a part of hinting mechanism. It can generate a hint matrix H from mask matrix. The most important effect of introducing a hinting mechanism is to improve the capability of the discriminator. Since the hinting mechanism tells the discriminator in advance part of the information that is missing from the original symbol. The discriminator, D, like the traditional GAN framework, will act as an advisory to chain generator. But unlike GAN, where the output of the generator has only two choices of real or fake, but under our model, the op output is a composite of observed and inferred entries. And the discriminator is also no longer to identify whether the input date is completely real or completely fake, but to try to distinguish, but try to distinguish which entries are observed and which are inferred. This is equivalent to predicting the mask matrix M. We train discriminator to maximize the probability of correctly predicting M. We train CNN and generator to minimize the probability of discriminator predicting M. We define the quantity V as the following equation. Then, just like the standard GAN, we define the objective to the min-max problem given by this equation. Then we can define the loss function L. We can run rewrite the min-max formula as follows equation. Both generator and discriminator are modeled as fully connected neural nets 
and the models are trained using gradient descent. The final part is our experiment. The two datasets we use can be collected from the UK government's website without any license. The first is datasets of world boundaries of London, and the second is chronic diseases prevalence datasets. It contains three diseases. We also apply root mean square error and mean absolute error to evaluate the prediction performance. CPH outperforms all baseline models across three disease states in all evaluation metrics and achieving a higher inference accuracy on average from 14.8% to 9.1%. In order to demonstrate the significance of improvement, we go back to our original goal of investigating if such performance is satisfactory for real-world population health monitoring tasks. For example, we, we assume a maximum impartition error range of the results to be less than 15%, and then compare the minimum sampling pr proportion that different algorithms need to achieve this goal. We experimentally found that CPH can sample even just 11% of the entry region to, uh, to give less than 15% completing error for the remaining missing regions. But the best plan algorithm, GAIN, needs to simply 57% of the region to satisfy the requirement. It shows that CPH method can use fewer sampling errors to perform the task of inferring population health state within a certain re error region, which is important in terms of cost saving and time span. At last, we demonstrate the existence of both intra-disease and inter-disease state correlations in population health state sites. For intra-disease spatial correlation analysis, to quantify the spatial similarity, we first calculate the distance of all world pairs and adopt four difference indicators, including arithmetic difference, Pearson distance, to measure the spatial correlation. And the smaller the values of these four indicators, the stronger the correlation of the selected world pairs. We present the impractical results as shown in figure. We can observe that the spatial correlations generally exist within a certain geographical scale, and they are no linear and even disappear out of a certain geographical scale. And for inter-disease state correlation analysis, we use Person correlation analysis and the results are showing a fit map. Fit map. The figure shows that there is strong correlation between between these three chronic diseases, and it is supported by relevant medical literature. In summary, we can indeed use this intra and inter disease state correlation to improve the performance of our model. So, in this work, we propose a deep learning based approach called Compressive Population Health to infer and in recover missing interest of population health prevalence rates of multiple chronic diseases by jointly leveraging both intra and inter disease population health data correlations. That's all. Thank you for watching.